Zybots. While this is an arcade game originating from 1987, it actually used a couple different concepts that were way ahead of its time. The story is simple. Go through all 16 levels and challenge Master Zybot for human survival. And then you're dropped into a maze to figure things out. Now what's really interesting about this gameplay-wise is, it's a third-person shooter. In fact, near as I can tell, this is the earliest example of a third-person shooter I'm aware of. So take that gameplay genres, we were rocking third-person shooters back in the 80s. Your character of choice must run through the environments, trying to dodge various enemy attackers, as well as intelligently use cover that, and this is going to shock you, you are not stapled to, in order to find the exit and move down to the next stage. Complete all 16 stages and you save the world, I guess. I don't know, I could only ever get to stage 16, then you fight Zybot himself, and he smashed me within a matter of seconds every time, so I don't know what happens after that. What's interesting about this game is, as it is an arcade game, it's based entirely around risk-reward. You have your character running around with what appears to be a Gamma Gun, so take that Fallout 4, we were rocking Gamma Guns back in the 80s, running around trying to take out your opponents and pick up power-ups. Now there's about four different enemy types. You've got ones that will fly around and basically dodge all of your attacks unless you get really, really good at aiming. You have guys that have shields, which while you can shoot through, it takes about five times as many shots. You have big tanky guys, which do a lot of damage. As well as these little UFO guys, which like to capture power-ups and drag them away. And if you get too close, suicide attack you, which takes out about a quarter of your health. So you gotta play it real smart with those guys. Now, as opposed to the very early levels where you get a layout of the map, you know where the power-ups are, and you know where the enemies are, very quickly they take that away from you. Suddenly you're in a maze that is completely randomized, you have no functional map until you map it yourself, you've got no idea how many enemies or what enemies you're facing, nor any clue where the exits or power-ups are. That is unless you are very good at saving your money. See, if you kill UFO enemies that have captured coins, or you find them lying around the maze, you can, in between levels, pay for power-ups. Stuff like more health, a health refill, slower health drain, a functional map, the ability to track your enemies on the map, all for the next level. Now the thing is, you have to collect coins to do this, right? Well, in order to do that, you have to find them in the maze, and the thing about that is, even if you manage to destroy all the enemies on one map of the maze, which is a real trying feat after the first couple because it gets very large and very unmanageable very quickly, because it's an arcade game, it's constantly going to be draining your health. So even if you make it safer for you to explore the maze, you can't stick around for too long. Meaning you have to manage your time properly if you want to collect all the power-ups so you've got a better shot at handling the next floor by obtaining various power-ups and information in between the levels. The only other way to increase your money total that I've found is by inserting another quarter into the machine. So take that, modern gaming conventions. We were rocking microtransactions back in the 80s. Oh, that's a bad thing. Ah, uh, well, crap. However, coins aren't the only power-ups you'll find along the way. You can find a better gun power-up, which will double your shot power or even triple it if you pick up a third one. You can also find health pickups, which will allow you to extend your time on each map. All this information is displayed up at the top of the cabinet, but if you're not too keen on looking at all that stuff when there's action to be had at the bottom, don't worry, because they made it simple for you to just focus on the action. See, your character is equipped with a backpack that actually shows his health. So take that, Isaac Clark. We were rocking back-mounted accessories that displayed your health back in the 80s. Yeah. This game's got a lot of conventions that were later used, and I'm not sure if anyone even knows this game did stuff like that. But yeah, a lot of modern gaming conventions actually were done here, about two decades earlier, which is really neat. If nothing else, Zybots was very ahead of its time in terms of gameplay. It was brutally hard and absolutely felt unfair at times, given that it takes away your ability to understand your surroundings and stuff, but it was still pretty neat. Speaking of unique, this game had a pretty interesting control scheme. At least originally on the arcade cabinet, it would have one joystick and a button to shoot. But as I understand, on the top of the joystick, there was a dial, which would be used to turn your character. Now, while I'm not playing the physical arcade machine, that does sound a little bit awkward. Fortunately, on this arcade remix that I'm playing on my 360, turning is relegated to the right control stick. Although you can have it set to your bumpers too if you want to do that, but that sounds weird. But ultimately, 
for a strange, weird, difficult arcade game. It's a ton of fun and very, very ahead of its time, I think. Presentation-wise, this game is pretty solid. You got about a half a dozen different robot types, as I've mentioned, as well as various recolors of them, which denote difficulty levels and how much health they have. Even in certain cases where you're fighting the regular ones, you can damage them and they'll change their palette color ever so slightly to show that you've hurt them. That's an awesome move. Seriously. And Zybot himself is mildly terrifying when he shows up and you're not expecting it. <laughs> which then proceeds to cream you immediately. Audio-wise, the soundtrack, while fairly nondescript, fits perfectly. It's high-speed, action-y, just funky beats, and I really dig the soundtrack to this game. Not memorable, mind you, but very, very good and well-produced. And overall, Zybots is, as I've said a few times now, definitely ahead of its time. It was rocking so many different conventions that nowadays are more commonplace, and Ultimately, without this, there might not be third-person shooters. So without this game, there might not be a Gears of War, or an Uncharted, or a Crackdown. Holy crap, there would be no Earth Defense Force! I can't live in a world without Earth Defense Force. So what I'm saying basically is, Zybots was awesome, and if nothing else, you should respect it for what it is, because without it, we'd be missing one giant genre that has taken over and unfortunately has since become a giant pool of mediocrity, but there are still a few gems. And for its time, certainly I think Zybots was one of them. Prepare to meet your doom. Power.